God, this goes the left faster than I thought. This goes the left faster than I thought. Oh God, the things have been made. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. It is day six, our last and final full day on board the Disney Wish. And guys, we are back at Castaway Key. We woke up a little bit late today. We woke up a little bit late today and I had some things to get done with the embarkation day upload, but we have that all finished. And now we are gonna head upstairs, grab something to eat real quick, and then head on over to the island. We have snorkeling to look for today, so I'm really excited about about that. We may take a quick trip over to Serenity Bay to see what it looks like in the middle of the summer, but other than that, it's gonna be a very relaxing day, and I'm very excited to head on over to the island. But first, breakfast. Can we just talk about how comfortable Nugget is right now? Living his best life. So one thing that's actually worth noting on Castaway Key Day is that Marceline Market actually closes 15 minutes earlier than any other day. On any other day, it closes at 10.45, but today, for whatever reason, it closes at 10.30. Definitely caught us off guard, so we're happy that we got here when we did. And no surprises here when it comes to breakfast, sausage, hash rounds, Mickey waffles, and an eggs benedict. Another great breakfast in the books at Marceline Market. Our second to last one, unfortunately. But now, Let's head down to the gangway. Ah, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, once again to Castaway Key, Disney's private island. We have a great view of the ship once again and some phenomenal weather outside. All right, advice time. Cruises are back to full capacity. The videos that you saw from our previous cruises where they were at lower capacity and Castaway Key was empty, those days are long gone. Make sure you get here early. Make sure you get off the ship at a decent hour and make sure you grab yourself a spot or else you're gonna be struggling to find a spot just like we did. So yeah, just get here early. <laughs> So we just got back from snorkeling and look at Nugget living his best life out here 
He's just out here chilling, protecting the cooler, watching our stuff. Look at you. Good lad, good lad. Current time is 1.30 in the afternoon. We were snorkeling for actually quite a bit. That was definitely one of the more enjoyable snorkeling sessions that I've ever had on Castaway Key. But now it is time to head on over to Cookie's Barbecue and get some lunch. Ah, Cookie's Barbecue lunch has been served. I have a wiener, I got some ribs over here, cornbread, cheeseburger, and some potato salad with some sweet muffins over here as well. Nothing like a little bit of relaxation underneath the palm trees. Alrighty, it is hot, we are tired, we are actually pretty well rested, <laughs> not gonna lie, we spent a little bit of time just chilling out underneath the trees and feeling the breeze and took a wee snooze, but now it is time to make our way back onto the ship. Alright guys, so I've been seeing your requests on Twitter, yes, we have met Ordinary <laughs> Adventures, finally! We've been sharing the ship with them, we've been seeing them every day, we've been chatting it up, and we've made some new friends on the cruise. Like, these guys are amazing, so you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of them on the channel. Whenever they come to Florida, we'll be sure to meet up every once in a while. But yeah, and whenever I go to Florida, or whenever I go to California, I'll make sure to meet up with them too. Yes, these guys are do. absolutely great. You guys should check yeah. out their channel if you haven't already. And we Phenomenal. finally met Nugget, so we finally met the whole I know, team. that's all that really matters. Yeah. <laughs> they were so excited to meet Nugget. Yeah. They saw us and they're like, where's Nugget? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't there, I was like disappointed. <laughs> Nugget's the most popular one on the channel, but yes, we finally met Ordinary Adventures. Great guys, I'll leave a link to their channel down in the description below, so that way you guys can check them out if you haven't already. Another awesome tip for you guys is right across the way from Mount Rustmore, we have the first aid station here on Castaway Key. For further reference, restrooms, she sells seashells right over there. They have a first aid station, you can go inside if there's anything major. And now here, they have band-aids, they have wipes, they have antibiotics, or what is it, anti... Like Neosporin. Yeah, Neosporin, yeah, triple antibiotic, and more band-aids in case you guys need any of that. And you can just come up here and grab whatever you need. The cruise ship. At the stop, you will find Marjus Marjus, the location for fire sailing, fly fishing, glass bottom boat, Richard Hunt snorkeling, troll fishing, bottom fishing, sandbar adventure, backcountry fishing, and adult snorkeling. Uh, so sad to be leaving Castaway Key. Like I said before, we're not scheduled to be back here tentatively until January. But you guys know me. We'll see if we can make another return trip soon. Let's go ahead, guys. It's hot. Oh my goodness, bless up. Look at those towels covered in ice. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy yourself? We did. Did you go snorkeling? We did. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And of course, they have the waters set up over here as well. Complimentary ice waters. Uh, it always feels so good to get back onto the ship after being in Castaway Key. You're covered in sand and salt. Well, you're not supposed to be covered in sand, but you're covered in salt water. And you just feel gross. All you want to do is shower. All right, guys. You know what time it is. End of cruise time. This time, it's for real. <laughs> Tomorrow we finally disembark the Disney Wish. After seven nights, that is insane. I can't believe we did it back to back. <laughs> this was a lot of fun though. Yeah. I definitely see why people love doing back to backs because a three night is not long enough or a four night for that matter. Like you got to do a seven night. <laughs> oh my gosh, it always feels so good to be showered and ready to go after a day at Castaway Key. Cody and I, we were just in the room just relaxing and then we looked at the navigator just to see what was going on. There's bingo in less than 10 minutes down in Luna. So we're going to go ahead down there and see if we can get in on some of that. Hi, number 21 and a few of you all one number away. So now we really are going to take a pause. I want to make sure that the answer gets back to you. Okay, so we're going to keep having some fun. Do you like that you get to mark it up and erase it? <laughs> I-29. That one was a good one. Alright, she's standing up. One away. What do we need? 073, okay. 073. We are I don't even care about mine anymore. 
in the G color. For the bingo Latin Z and E G number 51. We got a Damn it. Ah. Uh. Yes. One away again. One away again. This entire cruise would be one away. Oh my god. You, my dear, are walking away with our final cash payout of five thousand. Okay, so I have to say, that was the most insane game of bingo that I have ever seen on any Disney cruise. It also doesn't help that the venue is massive. Two decks worth of seats, and you have a lot of people in there. So it was standing room only pretty much for that game of bingo. Not complaining in the slightest. It was definitely a lot of fun. The energy was great. So upset that we were one number away. This entire cruise, literally, we've been one away from winning things, and we just haven't been able to pull it off. But it's all right. What are you going to do? <laughs> we're on our way back to the room now so Coda can go ahead and change. And then we're going to head downstairs. We're going to take some pictures with some of the backdrops. And then we are going to be having dinner today at Keg and Compass. Now, I feel so bad. <laughs> I feel so bad that we have not been eating in the main dining room this, this, this cruise. We only ate on the second night, and that was at Arendelle. And we had table mates. And it is nothing against the table mates. Quinn, I'm so sorry if you're watching these videos. It is nothing against you. We ate at all the main dining rooms on our first voyage and now that we're on the second voyage we've been doing something different for dinner every single night so i hope you guys can understand but uh yeah let's go ahead and get changed and take some pictures also apparently it is a thing now to dress up in like 20s flapper outfits is that what you call them yeah if you're dining at 1923 people like to dress up in roaring 20s flapper outfits so yeah, do with that information as you will. Alright guys, we are done taking pictures downstairs and now we are actually going to head up to the top deck and do something that we have yet to do this entire cruise and we are waiting until the very last day to do it. We're going to go ride the Aqua Mouse. <laughs> That is something that we have put off doing this entire cruise because the line has been so long. So we came up with the idea of let's go ahead and skip dinner in the main dining room today and go upstairs and see what the line is like while people are at dinner during the first seating. So let's go ahead and check that out. Because yeah, not only is it first seating, but the Little Mermaid show is actually being shown right now too for the people who are in second seating. So in theory, should be nice and empty up there. Let's go ahead and switch over to the GoPro and check it out. Okay, so it looks like our theory may have been correct. Current wait time is five minutes for the Aqua Mouse. However, <laughs> oh, it was down. And now they are reopening the queue. Time to head on in. <laughs> oh, the sky bucket. Oh god, this goes a lot faster than I thought! This goes a lot faster than I thought! Oh god, the things have been made! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> huh? They're gonna let us rewrite. Heck yeah. <laughs> So we're getting ready to head out of the room to go get dinner at Keg and Compass and this is how we like to leave our tips for our room host at the end of the voyage. They always see us walking around with Nugget and they're always asking questions and so on the very last night we always leave Nugget on the bed with a tip right there. Alright, time to have dinner at Keg and Compass. If it'll focus. There it is. You can barely see it. Alright, we have made it inside Keg and Compass. This was the location of our trivia yesterday and we are going to be having dinner in here. So here is a look at the menu. One thing to know is that nothing on this menu is included in the cruise. All of this you do have to pay separately for. So we do have buffalo wings. We have a 10 and 20 for 8 and 16 respectively. Plant-based chicken tenders, loaded potato puffs, German pretzel, fried coconut shrimp and prawn crackers, keg and compass platter, bangers and mash, fish and chips, steak and Einstock ale pie, and our desserts over here are sherry trifle and a brioche bread and butter pudding. Okay, so what we're gonna go for is we're gonna go for the buffalo wings. We're gonna get 10 wings that are sweet and barbecue. We're also gonna get the loaded potato puffs and the German pretzel. And I'm thinking we might get the fish and chips too, just to go ahead and get a little bit more of the menu sampled here for you guys. Oh my gosh, thing is massive. Thank you so much. Wow, and it comes with cheese and mustard as well. Holy cow. Okay, so the rest of the food has come out. Actually, no, not, not all of it. We're still missing the fish and chips. But we have the wings over here. These are the uh, sweet barbecue. And over there, we have the loaded tachos. Question oh my gosh. 15. Oh my gosh. The Jim Courier celebrates by jumping into the yard. Thank you so much. So what do you think of the pretzel so far? It's really good. It is actually really good. Really fresh, really soft. So like they, it tastes like they made this right now. It's so good. And then they brought out the fish and chips over there. It's massive. We have a lot of food. It's a good 16. thing we're splitting everything. Okay, so review of the pretzel. Get it. Good. Yes. Really good. Oh my god, that was phenomenally good. Now let's move on to the wings. Okay, so we just finished with the sweet barbecue wings. What's your verdict? Question number seventeen. What African nation gave each soccer team member a luxury of really good. We're in the middle of trivia right now. So yeah, the wings are a little small, but they do pack a punch and they are really tasty. Wish there was a little bit more meat there, but for $8, it's actually not bad. You got quite a few rings there. They actually gave us more than 10 wings. Okay, up next is the loaded tots. These look really good, holy cow. And look at how massive this is compared to my hand. This is a big plate, and this was $8. Only eight dollars by Disney standards. That's not bad. That's a lot for eight dollars compared to well, all things considered. All right, so we put a decent dent into the tachos. What do you think about them so far? Pretty good. I wish there was more toppings. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah. For eight dollars, though, are you complaining too much? Still really good. Yep. The only complaint: wish there was a little bit more toppings, a little bit more cheese. But other than that, really tasty. And last but not least. These are fish and chips. Hoo boy. This was the most expensive thing that we ordered. I believe this was $16. But I'm still excited to dig in. It looks really tasty. All right, so we're coming down to the wire here. We're both getting pretty full and we still have dessert to go. Um, so what were your thoughts on the fish and chips? The chips were better than the fish. Thank you. Yes, yes they were. The chips were 100% better than the fish. Now the fish, it just didn't have too much flavor. There wasn't too much flavor. The only way to get flavor was when you dip it inside the tartar sauce. So that really worked against it. And my particular fish, I think it was over fried. It was a little too, too crispy and too crunchy to get through. But the chips, 
were really, really good. Would I get the fish and chips again? No, not really. I don't think the chips alone are worth it. If you're looking for fried potatoes, get the, get the potato barrels over there and it'll be definitely much worth your money. And for dessert, ladies and gentlemen, we have the sherry trifle. Now, I don't know what else I was expecting. We were going to get the bread pudding, but they said that they were out of it, which makes sense. It's like one of the last hours that they're open on the last night of the cruise. But um, yeah, this reminds me of what they've been selling at the Universal Tribute stores, the cake in a cup. But it looks really good, so we'll go ahead and try it. All right, Coda and I put a pretty good dent in this. We, uh, we we dug down pretty deep, quite literally. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was so rich and very, very delicious. The custard on the inside was really good. I know it looks like ice cream, but it's not. It's like a custard. And the cake on the inside was really tasty too, with the strawberries. It was just all around. Really good, highly recommend this. This was $6. And if you're splitting everything here between two people, yeah, you can definitely get a lot for your money here at Keg & Compass. So overall, would you eat here again? Highly recommend it, absolutely. We definitely sacrificed dinner at 1923 for this meal, but you know what? For trying something new, it was worth it. It was worth it and I would definitely do it again. Okay, so here is our receipt for Keg and Compass. We have the wings that were $8, the potato puffs, $8, the German pretzel was $8, and the fish and chips, $16. Don't know why it's so expensive. And then the sherry trifle, which was $6. Grand total with auto gratuity, $54.28. So not too terrible at all. And if you're splitting everything, like the portions were large. So if you're splitting everything, that is definitely not bad at all, especially if you have a group of people as well. So um, the only thing I wouldn't recommend is the fish and chips, to be completely honest with you. Everything else that we had was really great. So yeah, Keg and Compass is a win. Now one thing that I want to say about Keg and Compass dinner is that it is not meant to replace your regular dining schedule. This is only for if you're on a four night sailing and there is a particular menu that you don't like, a particular restaurant that you don't like, or if you've just sailed the wish in general already and you don't want to you know, go to a particular restaurant. Like for us, for example, we don't like the pirate night. So we would definitely come here to Keg and Compass and enjoy dinner there. So this is the weirdest thing to me. We're in the gift shop and they have Worlds of Marvel merchandise. They have the spider bot skins, but they don't sell the actual spider bots. So why are they selling the skins? And I saw people, you know, picking these up thinking that they were the actual spider bots, but they're not. First of all, these three are facing the wrong way. <laughs> they're, they're all facing the wall. But yeah, like, you can only buy the spider bots at Avengers Campus. And, um,. These are just the skins, so that doesn't make any sense to me. Oh my god. That's the last thing we need right now, babe. Is a sleeping nugget. He's even got blushy cheeks and everything. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> How much is it? Probably too much. <laughs> How much is it? 40. 40? Oh, yikes. Oh, well, this is actually different. Fairy Godmother's out. What in the world? <laughs> That's awesome. What a way to end the cruise. <laughs> She's having way too much fun up there. <laughs> I love it. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is our last look at the atrium for the night. We're about to head back up to the room and go to bed. We are all cruised out. You can see a lot of guests are getting their last minute pictures taken with the different characters. You got Captain Mickey and Minnie down there. I'm sure there's some more characters over here that I'm not seeing. You have Goofy down here. And of course, Fairy Godmother up there. This was definitely a cruise to remember. All right, what is our towel animal for tonight? What is this? <laughs> What is this? Very awkward penguin. <laughs> it's, it's a penguin. <laughs> oh my god. What happened to your face, my dude? Scared? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's a little penguin. <laughs> penguin. <laughs> uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is that's it. That's all she wrote. 7 nights 
of Disney Wish in the books. Not a lot of people can say that they've been on their wish for seven nights this early in its lifespan. So I think we're pretty lucky. Yeah. I think we are extremely lucky and I am very thankful that we had this opportunity. I mean, granted, this seven night opportunity came on the heels of our first cruise getting canceled. <laughs> so we had the second cruise at 50% off. But anyways, um, so Coda, what are your final thoughts on the, on, on the ship and the trip in general? Three nights isn't enough, but I mean, you can probably say that about any ship. Um, but it's nice. Once you learn your way around, uh-huh. I'll be the first one to admit that when I first got on the ship, those first couple days, I was like, nope, I don't like it. I do not like this ship. I don't like the layout. I don't like it. But I've been on here for seven nights, and I, I like it. I like it. The ship has grown on me. Despite it not being ready. This ship was not ready to sail at all. She's still not. She's still not ready. This ship should have been delayed by multiple months more because there is so much that is not finished. There's so much that looks really bad and I am hoping that they get those issues resolved very soon so that way you guys in the future can have a better, you know, quality ship than, than we have because right now the, the Disney Wish is not ready. It is not ready. But despite all that, we still had a good time. Yeah. Despite all that, we still had a good time and we can see the potential in this ship and and and, and, and its beauty. Because this is a beautiful ship. It really is a beautiful ship. And like is especially the rooms, you know? Like there's a lot to love about this ship. And I definitely think that three nights is not enough. Four nights barely. Four nights barely. Like I think a seven night back to back, what we did was a perfect amount of time to get to know the ship in its entirety and to and to learn to love the ship for what it is. But anyways, we're gonna be doing a, a, a live stream later on where we go into more thoughts and details and I'll have plenty of other videos coming out sharing more thoughts and details and tips and tricks about the Disney Wish. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for that. Thank you all so much for watching, especially our Patreon supporters. I haven't thanked you guys enough. You guys are the absolute MVPs. Without you guys, this kind of content would not be possible. And all of you guys, my subscribers, any of you guys who watch all the way to the very end, the people who like the videos, the people who subscribe and read the notifications so that way you're the very first ones to watch the videos you guys are the absolute mvps as well i love each and every single one of you guys without you we would not be here this kind of content would not be possible and i would not be able to have this kind of adventure you know we just got off of an alaskan cruise and now we're here this is all because of you guys and i am eternally thankful and grateful for you guys so thank you all so much for watching today's video leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here and ring that notification bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video like this in the future i hope you're all having a wonderful day morning afternoon evening and i'll see you guys in the next video